the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 26 to 27 Colossians 1 26 to 27 and when you get there please say amen, amen. amen. of course I give honor to your pastors they're not here, they're in Hong Kong. So yesterday, Pastor and Sister O'Donnell, and um, they, we saw them yesterday, right? No, two days ago, on Friday, they were, uh, there was a special services during the week in United in Hong Kong. And they had a special speaker from Japan, uh, which was nice. And so we got to see them, spend time with them. Of course, Sister Kim looking after us again. Uh, so we thank God for Sister Kim being here. Colossians 1, 26-27 says, Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1, 26-27. I hope I'm, re I'm reading the right one, right? All right. Someone's not following me here. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's in there. Yeah, but uh, so Christ in you, the hope of glory. Lord Jesus, we give you glory. Thank you for your church. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the hunger I feel in this place. These people are hungry to hear from you, Lord God, and I pray your anointing over my life, for what, over what I say, Lord God. Your word is already anointed, Lord God. I pray you anoint me, Lord God, as your speaker today. I pray you anoint your church to hear what you want to say to them. And I pray for a divine intervention, Lord God, today, that you, Lord Jesus, will step in and respond to the faith that we have in this life. We give you glory, Lord God, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I feel faith in this house. I feel hunger in this house. Thank you for the worship. Thank you for what you bring to the Lord, the sacrifice that you're bringing. I know what you mean by sickness. Our boy has been struggling with fever and uh, his nose this week. And so we're glad that he's able to make it. Just about. Uh, I would like to remind you this Sunday... That you are an apostolic church. Amen. And that's, and we know whom we worship. Amen. It is uh, something, something sometimes easy to forget the message that I'm about to bring to you this afternoon. But in the Bible, there are more than 50 passages which teach and proclaim that God is one Amen. and that there is none other but Him. Moses, the man who is now renowned as one of the greatest prophets to have ever lived. One day this man stood up in front of the people and I believe he said with a great voice, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Amen. Isaiah, the prophet that, had, that has God speaking about himself to the people and God said this, he said, Is there a God beside me? That was the question he asked. He said, is there a God beside me? Yea, he answers his own question. There is no God. I know not any. If there is something that we have to learn and understand from the Old Testament, it is it's complete monotheism, which is to say that there is only one God and King over everything. So what is this God? What type of being is he? The Bible many times describes him to us in ways that we can understand him. It describes him as having hands, as having feet, as having arms, as having eyes, as having ears. There are also times when the Bible describes God as someone that can feel, someone that can see, someone that can walk, and someone that can talk. These descriptions of God are nothing more than ways for us to be able to understand with our limited minds and unlimited and infinite God. Amen. The real response that is given in the Bible when we ask, 
what is God can be found when the Samaritan woman asked Jesus as to where it is that they have to worship. Jesus gives her a response. Jesus says, God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must yes, worship Him in spirit and in truth. Yes. A spirit cannot be touched like a human being. Yes, right, right. It is a force that cannot be seen. Jesus said, a spirit hath no flesh and bones as ye see me have. This spirit that we're talking about today is a spirit that cannot be seen. Yes. It's a spirit like no other spirit as well because... The spirit we are talking about today is God himself. Hallelujah. And God's spirit cannot be measured. Amen. God's spirit cannot be contained. God's spirit cannot be stopped. Yes. It has Hallelujah. no beginning and it has no end. It is a spirit like no other spirit. It is present everywhere at the same time. Time. It is here in Macau as it is in Hong Kong as it is in London as it is in Manila. It is everywhere yeah. at the same time. Yeah. It is so powerful. Amen. It can do anything that when we really think about it, we begin to think and talk like the psalmist when he compared the work of this great God in comparison to man. He said, when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him. When we compare ourselves to him, we realize we are very small. We know He is one, that He is invisible, that He is also someone that cannot be divided. He, this Spirit as well, cannot be contained. This yes. Spirit cannot be stopped. This Spirit cannot be measured. That's why we have to sometimes shout like the Apostle Paul when he said, Now unto the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only wise God. Be honored and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Paul mentions that this God, which is one, which cannot be contained, which cannot be measured, yes. which cannot be stopped, has progressively revealed himself in the past. Which Paul then describes as a mystery. He has manifested himself like a voice upon the Garden of Eden. In Mount Sinai like a burning bush. Yes. That would just not burn out. Yes. Like a theophany of an angel when Jacob was battling for his blessing. In the tabernacle he manifested himself in the holiest of places. When he wrote the Ten Commandments, this God, which has no body, manifested himself like, a, like, a, a, like the hand that wrote the Ten Commandments. Like the fourth man in the fire. Yes. When the three boys were thrown into the fiery furnace. All of these manifestations were incredible and they served their purpose. They were important and effective, but they have nothing. In comparison to what God did next. The invisible God decided to reveal himself to this generation in all his fullness. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The Greek meaning for word signifies expression, a thought. Like my thoughts and my thinking are not different to me, to my person. God is the same. What it says is that the thought of God coming to earth was from the beginning 
And this thought was with God. And this thought was God. And the word was made flesh. Amen. And dwelt among us. Hallelujah. And we beheld his glory. The glory as the, of the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. Amen. God came to be something which he was not. Without stopping being what he already was. It means to say, he took on the form and manifested himself in man without stopping being the all powerful force which is, exists everywhere. That's why Paul writes, and without controversy, yes. great Hallelujah. is the mystery yes. of godliness. Hallelujah. God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, Whoa. believed not in the world, and received God the glory. Amen. The reason I say this to you is because the God we serve is very different Amen. to other gods. Yes. You see, Egyptian pharaohs, Japanese emperors, Chinese emperors, Roman emperors, Dalai Lamas, Inca emperors. Nepalese kings all throughout history they have something in common and that, com that common aspect is that they all claim that they were gods in other words many men have claimed to be God but only one God has decided to come and manifest himself in the form of a man in Jesus Christ we have God himself redeeming us. Redeeming our lives without the help of anyone else. Yes. To wit, that God was in Christ. Reconciling the world to himself. You see in the incarnation, Jesus has a dual nature. Amen. Like no other man before or after him. That does not mean that he has two personalities and that he's somehow confused as to who him is but that as a human he was the son of God as God he was the father yes. as son he talked and acted like man as father he talked and acted like God he came as the son of God to redeem us from our sins Amen. you see there had to be a perfect sacrifice to be able to wash away our sins. The blood of animals up to that point, although they were effective for a season, could not contain the eventual sting of sin, which is death. Amen. Blood had to be shed for there to be a covering for sins. And Paul writes this, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man. God and man, the man, Christ, Jesus. For in him, Paul says, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen. You see, what his word tells us is that all the fullness of the Godhead is in Jesus. Amen. You're looking for the Father, you're looking for the Son, you're looking for the Holy Spirit. Where do you find the Father? Where do you find the Son? Where do you find the Holy Spirit? We find it all in Jesus. Because in Jesus, there is all the fullness of the Godhead. And this day, we have come here to this place to seek Him and worship Him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been such a long time with you, and you still don't know who I am? Philip, he that had seen me had seen the Father. How sayest thou show us the Father? And because Jesus is God, it means nothing is impossible to him. He can do anything. Spirit that was from the beginning was in Christ Jesus. That's why Jesus. 
just said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. In Jesus, there was this all powerful spirit. He had power over all infirmity. He had power over nature itself. He had power over every demon. He, when he was present, every demon prayed to him to ask what they should do. He even had power over death. He not only has the qualities to make him a man, but he was God in man. He could calm a storm. He, can, he could create when he turned the water into wine. He healed. He set free. He raised the dead. He received worship. This made Jesus God. In the old times, there was so much prophecy about God in the end times. In the past, people struggled with the name. The scribes of the Jewish books stopped writing the name. They stopped pronouncing the name. And that's why, to this day, they don't know the name of God. We find in the Bible, we find Adonai, we have, find Jehovah, we, have, we find Elohim. But in reality, they're not the complete names of who God is. But there was a prophet who came up and he prophesied this. He said, and the Lord shall be king over all of the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord and his name one. And in Matthew, Zacharias' prophecy came true when an angel came and the, the prophecy and the, and, the, and the writer writes this and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. You see, this day, the name of Jesus is precious to in this day, Hallelujah. we are people of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We have come to this place to worship Him and because we know His name. Yes. Others have tried and they tell us, apostolics, they try and say, relax. Stop being such fanatics about this. You have to be more accepting. That as long as we have some form of Christianity, then we should be content and, you know, we should try to get along with other forms of Christianity and in the end that we are all the same. The point, they point to titles ascribed to him in the third and the fourth century as the way that they should be, that we should refer to him. But that is not what my Bible teaches me. They have tried to divide him. They have tried to say that there are two different persons. They have tried to tell us that there are three different persons in the Godhead. But I'm here to remind this church today that there is only one God. And that there is only one name. And that that name has already been revealed to us. That is why we still do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They tell us to relax. They tell us to be more understanding. They tell us to be more accepting. Yes, we will. But we 